Hello everyone and welcome to Coffee and Conversation with Kristen. I want to talk new construction today, okay? And a lot of it is the turnkey new construction, meaning you are buying a home from a builder who probably has a listing agent as well, but maybe does not. And um, with that being said, it's really important that you're all aware of the additional expenses that may come up with the new construction, okay? Even though you're buying a home, there are your typical closing costs, but there's also a few extras to be aware of and things to really plan for because I have seen in the last probably six to 12 months, okay? We're really hopping on new construction. There's a lot of developments going up. The inventory is tight, right? So people are really learning or leaning towards new construction more than not. And I, I understand all of that, right? And who doesn't want a beautiful brand new home? A lot of good things there. Okay, so a couple things to be wary of when you're doing a new construction home, okay? One, the tax proration. I actually had a client not long ago who was really banking on the tax proration from a seller to, um, you know, bring his costs down because he still has to set up an escrow account, right? So when you're setting up your escrow account, you're setting up your escrow account so that in the year that the property taxes are coming due, that you can pay them in full. That is your escrow account. It's similar to a savings account. Every month you deposit, you make a payment, and in your payment is your escrow for your taxes and insurance. And then that goes into a savings account held on your behalf, and then at the end of the year, or when your insurance comes due, um, you get the bill, we get the bills, and then we pay them on your behalf of, as a servicing lender, okay? So that's the basics on escrow, right? Well, when you're buying an existing home, the taxes are already assessed, okay? And when you have an assessed taxes, the seller gives you a tax proration from January 1st till the day of closing. That's a credit to help offset your escrow account because even though you don't live in the home for the full year, we do have to set an escrow account up for you for the full year because at the end of the year when those taxes come due, you are technically responsible for them because your name is now on the deed. Okay, so that's why that does that. Now, when a seller gives you a proration, it's a credit, again, from January 1st till the day of closing. So let's just say the taxes are $3,000 a year. It's September, October. We're gonna need that nine or 10 months, September and October, and then a two-month cushion. All escrow accounts require a two-month cushion, all right? So we're looking at somewhere between 11 and 12 months of collecting escrows from you. Now, let's say you're closing at the end of September. We'll meet in the middle. That seller is going to give you a credit for that full nine months or January 1st till the end of September, right? So then you're bringing in the difference. Now, if it's new construction and it's that time of the year, the likelihood of you getting fully assessed by the end of the year is slim. However, I've seen it happen. It really depends on when that basement was dug. That's when the assessors go off of when the home started, okay? So as a lender, I'm gonna say to you now, can we please get you your escrow set up, all right? And we're gonna escrow as if the taxes are going to be paid in full because if they do assess, December 10th, that tax bill comes out and let's say they send you a tax bill and a new construction, we'll just stick with the same 3,000 and the seller really has only been paying on land and not on the fully assessed, they are not giving you their proration. Sorry, at our time spent that out. They're not giving you a credit for the full taxes. That's on you to come up with. They're gonna prorate your taxes typically on the land, which is five or $600. That's a big chunk of money as a buyer you're probably coming up with, okay? So make sure you're aware of that. Make sure your lender is going over that with you because then after, let's say you don't get assessed, right? So then you have an escrow analysis in probably February. Maybe those taxes are about 50 bucks, right? So now your payment comes down or your payment stays at the $50 if your lender set it up that way, assuming you won't be assessed. Then next year, when your taxes come due, you will be fully assessed. And now your escrow is short because your escrow maybe only has $500 in it. However, your taxes are going to come due at the $3,000. We'll just stick with the same numbers for ease. Are you prepared and do you have that extra $2,500 in pocket to pay those in full? You will need to. So the tax payments 
escrows, and parations are extremely important to talk with your lender on. If that's confusing at all, give me a call and I'm happy to break it down a little bit better for you. A little bit, you know, a little longer conversation. We'll go over everything one by one. Obviously for the video and the lack of time, we want to just keep it short. But that's number one. Really make sure you understand your escrow, your setup, and what your responsibility is for that and what the seller's responsibility is for that. Two, don't forget when you're buying a new home, most sellers or most builders are not including the landscaping, all right? Do you live, are you buying a home in an area that has covenants that says when your landscaping has to be in? And are you prepared financially to pay for that out of pocket? I hope so, but make sure. Make sure you're reading those covenants. Make sure if you're using a real estate agent that the real estate agent is going over those things for you so you're not surprised. All right. Is there going to be a sidewalk going in in the next handful of years? And are you as a buyer responsible for that sidewalk? Things we need to know. If there's not a sidewalk, do you have to have a certain amount of landscaping done? Does it have to have a reflection of just grass? You know, don't forget your bushes. Landscaping can be one, really hard to get a hold of a landscaper right now at any quick time. And two, it can be very expensive. I just, my husband and I just did a huge landscaping project this last summer. Woo! It is amazing, just like everything else in the world going up in price, landscaping is too. So please make sure you are financially prepared to put that landscaping in if it does not come included with your purchase price, okay? That's something that a lot of people forget about and it's important to know. So two, make sure you're ready to landscape that house and what your responsibility as a buyer are to the covenants of that neighborhood if there are any. All right, lastly, three. Right now, I've had a couple of my new constructions go along. Uh, carpet guy got COVID. Basement couldn't get poured on time. Windows can't come in on time. These are the realities of closing on a new construction, all right? Now, as a buyer, do you have a backup plan if we're not closing on time? Two, should we lock in your rate? How confident is your builder they're gonna close on time? If we're locking in your rate, rates are moving, you guys, and can change daily, all right? If that rate expires, are you paying for it? Is the builder paying for it? Are we relocking 30 days later? How much time do we need? Especially coming into the winter in the Midwest, you guys, we're working with snow, we're working with rain, we're working with frozen ground. There's a lot of different things, okay? So just really sit down and have the conversation with the builder if you can on what the reality of closing looks like so that you're prepared with your rate lock with your lender. Where are you living in the interim? Do you, have an, do you have somebody you can move in with? Are you selling a home to buy this home? Are you going to sell it and have to go somewhere because now your builder goes long? These are the realities of what's happening in new construction. This is not to scare you, beautiful. There are some amazing builders out there building beautiful homes to the best turn times that they can. But again, the reality is, is there's a shortage of just about everything out there right now and that does not disclude window companies, flooring companies, garage companies, siding companies, roofing companies, lumber companies, you name it, okay? And all of those things are invested in that. And that builder is somewhat at the mercy of their suppliers and their vendors coming in with those things. So make sure that you have a solid backup plan because you wanna be able to enjoy your build. You don't want it to be extra complicated, extra stressful, those kind of things. If it goes smoothly and you don't need any of that, wonderful. That's great. But being prepared versus not is also super important. So just make sure that when you're buying a new construction, you look at those three things because they're extremely important right now. I am happy to go over any of that with you. Obviously, I'm doing a lot of new construction home purchase. I understand them well. I've been doing new construction uh, lending for 20 years. So it's really important to know exactly what's going on and to working with a lender who understands them. It's somewhat like a niche property, you guys. You want to work with a lender who truly understands how this works. Now, with that also being said, you're probably looking at a two-step appraisal. When you do that, you have your regular appraisal, 
Then you have a subject to, meaning the appraiser goes out the week of closing to make sure that that home is completed. There's an extra $150 fee there. So if your closing costs go up a little bit on the appraisal side, that would be why, all right? Not to mention if you need a rate lock extension, those kind of things. So fees can tick up. Just keep your, your you know, that's just another thing you want to stay apprised about. Thank you so much for listening. As always, I hope you have a great day. Enjoy that coffee today. And while you're taking this Sunday to just relax, hopefully you are, um, let me know if you have any questions. I am available for your phone calls. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.